The NBA playoffs are right on the horizon, but the Philadelphia 76ers are still tinkering with the roster and trying to complete it in preparation. In fact, this year I would argue there's still more to be determined about this roster than just about any year I can remember. But they did lock up one player, a guy that was previously on a two-way contract, that being Jeff Doughton Jr. Now, this is a bit of a surprise to me considering that we still do not have a standard deal for Ricky Council IV, who I think has shown more and less opportunity. But I do think Doughton Jr. is a guy that has opened my eyes a little bit, that he is a Nick Nurse guy, and that is crystal clear due to their time with the Raptors and in the Raptors organization together. And he has played well in his limited opportunities thus far. So to pull off the press release specifically, the Sixers announced that they signed Jeff Doughton to a standard NBA deal. He averaged 19.1 points, 5.4 assists, and 1.2 steals for the G League's Delaware Bluecoats. He scored an NBA career-best 12 points on March 20th with Philadelphia. Philadelphia 76ers president of basketball operations, Daryl Morey, announced today that the team has signed Jeff Doughton Jr. to a standard NBA contract. Per team policy, teams of the deal were not disclosed. Downton Jr. originally signed a two-way contract with Philadelphia on March 2nd. Since then, he has appeared in seven games with the Sixers, averaging 4.4 points on 50% shooting from three-point range, 1.6 rebounds, and 2.4 assists in 12.3 minutes of action. In the midst of his third professional season, Downton Jr. recently scored a career-high 12 points versus Phoenix on March 20th. He also recorded a career-high six assists and tied a career-best with three steals against Memphis on March 6th. Downton Jr. suited up for the 76ers G League affiliate Delaware Bluecoats in 20 regular season games, averaging 19.1 points, 5.4 assists, and 1.2 steals. He was one of just 10 G League players with such averages in the regular season. So a pretty good pitch about what he's done this season and overall for Downton Jr. I will note that he is older than I expected or really new to this point. He's just about to turn 27 years old. He's like 26 and 361 days, I believe, is when I looked it up on the basketball reference. So fresh about to be 27, which is really old for a guy that was riding a, a two-way contract. You don't see that very often. Typically, these are reserved for guys that are 19, 20, 21, 22 in that range early in their developmental arc. But he is a guy that seems to be a bit of a late bloomer. And in fact, fact, I think that's a bit to his advantage in this specific situation, that we know the Sixers team is a win-now roster, that they have their intentions on contending this year, and Jeff Doughton is a guy that clearly Nick Nurse trusts, that there's even been limited opportunities that he has got at the NBA level that I think he's gone to Doughton over other guys that I've expected. And to bring up the game log specifically this year, that he hasn't gotten uh, in a ton of action, just seven games overall, but in those matchups specifically, that he played 23 minutes back against the Memphis Grizzlies, 19 minutes against the Pelicans, 12 minutes, 12.02 against the Clippers. That's a lot for a guy that was on a two-way deal at the time. And some of these standout performances, which were mentioned in the press release, the 12 points against the Phoenix Suns, 10 points against the Grizzlies, 6 assists in that game. That was probably the game that opened my eyes the most. And I'll say what stands out to me the most about Downton, it is just the decision-making. That he's a calm, cool, collected figure on the court. That he's very smart with what he does with the basketball. And that's clearly a very positive trait and one that Nick Nurse values. That it does feel like if they get in a pinch and need a guy to captain the second unit for a couple minutes, Nurse has the confidence to give Downton that opportunity. And really that's why I think things have arrived at him getting this contract overall. And I will note that as the the roster currently stands, there's still a remaining roster spot beyond Jeff Doughton. That that, that brings it to 14 full-time contracts on the season. Obviously, you can carry up to 15 and not a lot of time left in the season, so I do expect that to be fulfilled. Whether that is a Ricky Council on a potential long-term deal, which would be my dream, the fact that it has got to this point in the season and that has not happened yet makes me pretty pessimistic that that is the case. And it wouldn't surprise me if they do make a little bit more of a win-now push, that they do go for maybe a veteran or a guy that can can bring it up. A couple names or one specific name that continues to linger on my mind is Danny Green, that I have no knowledge or have not been told this by any means, but there is a little bit of in my gut that I feel that there's some sort of handshake agreement with Danny Green that they will bring him on for this playoff run. I know for a fact that he continues to work out in the Sixers practice facility, which is pretty strange for a guy who essentially is out of the NBA at this point, that he has not had a, a any minutes played all year. He did play a little bit of preseason with the Sixers team. I think we all forget about that, that he was cut from the Sixers team following the James Harden trade when they brought back a number of players, KJ Martin, Nico Batum, Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, that that overfilled the roster and Danny Green being a guy that ultimately got the short end of the stick there. But Danny Green's a guy that's been around the block a ton. He is a veteran. And especially the reason that I do say that 
is because this Sixers team is getting banged up. That two guys that we have not seen in seemingly forever, Robert Covington and DeAnthony Melton. And it does not seem like the end is in sight for either. And the most specific update we have, this being from Kai Carlin here of Sixers Wire, he says, Nick Nurse says they're still trying with DeAnthony Melton and Robert Covington. They're both on the court. There's still some obstacles that must be taken care of. So it does increase my hopes that these guys do step foot on the floor in an actual game situation, that they are going through some workouts now, that we can see film of them on court before games actually getting shots up. And that's a pretty new development that for most of the time, we've been kept entirely in the dark on this situation for what their status is. Both those guys would be impact rotational players on the Sixers team. We've seen what DeAnthony Melton has done. That is, This has been a steady starter for the Sixers team. And thankfully, Kyle Lowry has been able to pick up a lot of that slack and make a really positive impact. I once again want to throw my hand up and admit that he has far more left in the tank than I expected, but I'm very grateful that that is the case. But they absolutely could use both Melton and Covington. Both guys that are defensive-minded players and seem to be exactly what Nick Nurse looks for in a player. Frankly, I think the, the defense would look far more dynamic if these guys were a part of the rotation, but ultimately the health has to allow for that to be the case. And the other guy that most recently missed the game, it is Tobias Harris. And not, not quite as negative of news surrounding Tobias Harris as far as his injury, whether that's a positive or negative for you, I will let that to be determined. But the update that we have here originally from Keith Pompey saying Tobias Harris will miss tonight's game against the Miami Heat, according to sources. The Sixers power forward banged his left knee in the final two minutes of Tuesday's game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Harris had an MRI today in Miami, sources said. Tobias Harris's MRI revealed a bad bruise, according to a source. The source expects him to miss one or two games. So besides the fact that I'm pretty confident that this source is Tobias Harris directly himself telling this to Keith Pompey, ultimately that means that he's not going anywhere. He's going to be around this team. I don't want to be make this a Tobias Harris video, but I'm just going to note how good the starting lineup looked against the Miami Heat with Kelly Oubre, Nico Batum, and no Tobias Harris in sight in that. I don't expect that to actually come to fruition and be the lineup they, they were roll with, but I would not be heartbroken if this Tobias Harris uh, away from the team time gets extended a little bit. But to bring it back to Jeff Doughton specifically and why I do think this is a positive move, it is a guy that I do think that in a pinch can step up and play. And to take a look at his full G League resume, well, for I'll start with last night during that, uh, and I'm recording this uh, right after the Heat game the next day, that during that Heat game, the G League, the uh, Blue Coats were in a playoff game in the G League playoffs there, and Doughton absolutely balled out. And to give his full numbers for this, he finished with 41 points, 8 assists, and 7 rebounds. Jeff Doughton Jr. was outstanding for tonight's Blue Coats, this coming from the official G League account. Scored a career-high 41 points on 66% field goal percentage. Downton's performance is the second-highest scoring postseason game in Bluecoats history behind Jaden Springer's 43 points last year. So poor one out for Jaden Springer. Disappointing there. But it is still notable to take away from Jeff Downton. And by the way, this coming shortly after the fact that it was announced that he got a standard NBA deal. So what a way to prove that you are worth it there. And this is no fluke. That When you look at his G League stats as a whole, most recently this year with the Blue Coats, averaging 19.1 points, 5.3 assists, 1.2 steals, shooting over his career 41.3% from beyond the arc, which is a really appealing number. And even if you want to flash back a couple years, averaging or shot 44.2% from beyond the arc back in 21 22 uh, during his time there, uh, and has averaged over 20 points per game at a couple different locations now. So the numbers do stand the test of time, and I am hoping that he's ready to take this to the NBA level. I'm not saying that Jeff Doughton is going to change the ceiling of the Sixers team, but I am feeling fairly confident that he can at least be a competent ball handler and decision maker in the offense if the Sixers need him to be. He's a good player. He's a solid player. He is not this high upside, big upswing that I'm excited about what he could grow into, but he's a guy that can help the team right now, and frankly, that's what the Sixers team does need. So let me know what you think of Jeff Doughton and my biggest question for you guys is I want to hear your prediction for who that final roster spot will be. That it doesn't make any sense to carry just 14 into the playoffs. You might as well use the spots if you got them. And I do expect the Sixers to make sure that happens. So let me know any names. Do you see any of the Danny Green mentality that I, I kind of am feeling is going to happen behind the scenes? I don't love the decision if that is what it is, but I wouldn't hate having Danny Green on this roster. He's a guy that can knock down three-pointers, and he did look fairly spry for my expectations based on how he looked in preseason. He hasn't played any competitive basketball since that point, so not something serious but shout out to Jeff Doughton for getting the deal done. Shout out to you guys for watching this video. Make sure you're smashing that subscribe button, dropping a like, and I'll talk with you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.